evening, everyone. My name is Stefan Atmaja, and I'm currently a grade 11 student attending Jakarta Intercultural School. Today, I'll be showcasing my Dan Altova fertilizer project with all of you. This is Dan Altova. Dan Altova is the largest lake in Indonesia and the largest volcanic lake in the world. Fun fact, a small island inside Dan Altova is bigger than the entire country of Singapore. This is a historical site that holds much significance for the Indonesian people, including myself. Around 77,000 years ago, the eruption of the Toba volcano represented a climate-changing event. One of the effects was the creation of a, of a large crater near the volcano. As a few millennia passed, the crater filled up with water and is now regarded by the world as Dan Toba. As of 2020, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, also known as UNESCO, has regarded this lake as a UNESCO Global Geopark, a title only held by a handful of landscapes. But this is the current state of the lake. Many water hyacinth plants has invaded Danau Toba. And from the pictures, you could see that many cuddled groups of water hyacinth plants are spread throughout the lake. So, what are water hyacinth plants? Water hyacinth plants, or more commonly known in Indonesia as eceng gondok, is an invasive parasite plant that ruins the lake's ecosystem. One of its ways it ruins the ecosystem is by one, prohibiting sunlight. Eceng gondok floats in the surface of the lake, and that prohibits sunlight from entering into the lake. This limits the plant's ability to photosynthesize and create food. Secondly, it decreases oxygen levels for living organisms living under the lake. And this can ruin food chains and ecosystems that already exist. So, by prohibiting sunlight and decreasing oxygen levels, this will ultimately decrease the population of both plants and animals living in the prestigious Danau Toba. Not only does it have fatalistic environmental effects, it has very harmful social effects as well. Danau Toba is a global tourist attraction. But with Echengonov flying around, it'll create a less appealing scenery, which will reduce the amount of tourists coming to Danau Toba. My solution to this problem is to collect Echengonov and turn it into a fertilizer. My project has two goals. One, clean the lake of Echengonov, and two, turn Echengonov into something beneficial for the local community. The reason why I chose to turn Echengonok into a fertilizer is because of its rich nitrogen content. Nitrogen is a crucial component for fertilizers as it develops the chlor chlorophyll for plant growth. Thus, because Echengonok has such a high nitrogen content, I believe it's a good ingredient to turn into a fertilizer. So, this slide shows the outline of my process, and it first starts with collection. Boats shown in the picture will be used to collect Echengondok in the lake. The boats will travel to many high concentrations of Echengondok and use a net to reel them in to bring them back to land. The picture shown on the right shows what Echengondok looks like just after being collected from the lake. Next step is grinding it. The Echengondok will then be grinded using a machine. So the raw Echengondok will be placed on top of the machine and the crushed Echengondok will be collected from the bottom. The third step is fermentation. The cross etching gondok will then be placed on a plastic sheet, will then be spread out equally so it's thin. Next, liquid bacteria will be sprayed all over in order to undergo fermentation. Afterwards, the plastic sheet will then be folded on top of the crushed etching gondok in order to create a dark and moist environment. This is crucial as it speeds up the fermentation process that usually takes around three weeks. The fourth step is pelleting. After three weeks, the mixture of crushed etching gondok and liquid bacteria will harden and turn into a fertilizer. The fertilizer will then be put on a pelleting machine, which will pellet the fertilizer into capsule form. This is done to ease the use for fertilizers for the farmers. The last and final step of this process will be packaging. 
pelleted fertilizer will then be placed on a translucent bag, and the design shown on the screen will be the design used for the packaging that will be sold to the farmers. So, the etching out of made fertilizers have proved to be effective. My team has run lab reports on it, and it has shown that the NPK value, NPK, which is a standard used to measure the effectiveness of the fertilizer, it has a value of 7.13%, which is nearly double the amount of the government subsidized ones of 4%. For further proof, this is the comparison of PADI with and without using the fertilizer. As you can see, the one using the fertilizer has grown much quicker than the one without in the same amount of time. So the impact stem from my projects can be already be felt by the Danau Toba community. Danau Toba, as you know, is located in North Sumatra, and the main occupation in the North Sumatran community are farmers. So the fertilizers will be sold to the farmers in a cheap price in order to further benefit their agricultural purposes. Another impact is that the lake is now cleaner. The lake is now clean enough that it's able to hold international events like the F1 Powerboat competition that was recently held in the month of February. Last but not least, the lake is, we are able to preserve the population of both flora and fauna living in this prestigious lake in order for future generations to witness this wonder of the world. Thank you for your listening and I hope you enjoy.